Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of the Backyard Sports Center podcast. I am your host, Natastic28. Today is a really special episode. I've been really excited to record this one for a while now, and we finally had the opportunity to sit down and record this. Today, I am joined by the one and only, many people call him the GOAT, the founder and re-developer of the Backyard Sports Online Project, Little Tune Cat. How are you doing tonight? I'm pretty good. Thank you for having me. Really excited to have you on. Thank you for your willingness to be a guest on the show. Really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. I like to do this. So the first thing that I wanted to bring up with you since it just recently happened was to kind of go over the charity stream, anniversary stream that we just recently had. That was pretty amazing. Totally blew my mind how well it went. We raised, about, I think it was like $350 for St. Jude's Charity. That was amazing. We had some of the voice actors on the stream, which was really cool to see. Voice of Finny the Gooch and the Cons were both on the stream, as well as a professional golfer that was a friend of uh, Jibbo. There was some uh, teams that were made and a couple of games that we played. Overall, just a lot of fun. What was your kind of experience of that uh, stream this weekend? Uh, it, it's really kind of fun. I, even though we're a small community, it really blew me away that we managed to reach that amount of money for St. Jude. It's, I love this community sometimes. It's, it may be small, but they can do really amazing things. I like it here. That is for sure. It is maybe small, but it's, you know, it's hard to find a better community than the one that we have here. Yeah, they even had the guts to reach out to some voice actors, some professional players, even more than I can do. And that, again, that's really amazing. Yeah, uh, some of us are a little crazy. <laughs> but a lot of people that you know, we're working at reaching out to people and came together and was a totally blew it out, total uh, home run for sure. <laughs> we kind of did at a home run. <laughs> That's one yeah. way of it. Yeah, to use the baseball analogy. So, get into the main reason why I had you on here. As the kind of the founder and you know the person that developed the online servers and everything first kind of thing that i want to ask you is how did you come across the humongous entertainment slash backyard sports games did you play them when you were younger or did you find them a little bit later uh. I started playing Humongous Entertainment games since, well, pretty much as long as I can remember, really. I was very little when I played my first Humongous Entertainment game, and it pretty, pretty much stuck with me my entire life. It basically made my childhood, and it made me pull me, it pulled me through some hard times, and, and whenever I feel down, I can play one of these games again, and instantly I can feel happy. And, uh, for the backyard sports games, I I originally had no interest in it until I picked up backyard football and I played a full season game and it was a whole lot of fun and decided to pick up a few other backyard sports games like baseball and man, there was a lot of fun. But yeah, humongous game, basically my entire childhood. I love them. So interesting that you started that with some of the other franchises at first which one which one of the the non-sports franchises is your favorite for that that is uh, made by humongous 
pajamas down, no doubt. This kid had a lot of imagination, and I certainly had a lot of imagination, so I feel for Sam. He was basically my hero of my childhood, really. That's awesome. I love the uh, pajama Sam. That was one of my favorites. I always wanted the the cape, so my mom like made a, the like pajama Sam cape for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I wish I had a cape like that. Well, Halloween's coming up. Maybe you could be pajama Sam for Halloween. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could be Pajama Sam, but people wouldn't recognize who I am. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe someday, but not this year. If they didn't recognize it, then that's their problem, not yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there was, growing up, the for me, the humongous entertainment games, just all the series were a huge part of my childhood. The Spy Fox, Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish, Putt Putt, even the some of the learning games. I pretty much did all had all of them. <laughs> That's really cool to hear that you, uh, you know, were a fan of the entire all the uh, franchises growing up, and that you know you're a fan of the games and the series, just like many of us are. So the other question is how did you get into programming or how did you come think that you know this is something that you enjoy doing i don't even remember when i started programming it's i think around when i started high school or so and that's when i really started to learn how computers work and yeah i kind of like programming i started off with Python, which pretty much the most easiest scripting language to easiest one to learn, and I bet and I then I basically move up of that eventually to JavaScript to eventually C plus plus, which is what Scumfium is programmed in, and yeah, I just like programming. So, what was kind of the experience of or the the journey? From starting with enjoying programming and enjoying the humongous series, how did the two kind of intersect and for you to start working on the um, different scum projects? Well, I basically love technology just as when I started to love humongous entertainment. Whenever I play a humongous game and something that happens on screen, Every time I was like, whoa, how do they do that? And so I started around the middle school. I started messing around, learning how the game was programmed. And there were some fan-made tools which allows you to look inside the AG files, the music, the sound, the scripts, and all that kind of stuff. So I started looking into it and started messing around. And eventually I started to learn how to program and kind of learn use it up from there so is uh scum something that's been around for a while the what is uh the scum vm engine something that's been around for a while uh yes the scum vm is definitely been around for a long while now since the early 20 2000s and oh wow i didn't know it was that old yeah, you'll be surprised how old games are. So I knew the all the games were, you know, from like the the late nineties and early two thousands, but I didn't know that the engine that we play the online PvP with was around, you know, like ten, fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's really cool. So was the what the backyard sports online one of the first projects you did or was there uh what were some of the other projects you worked on prior to this one? Oh no, there's there are definitely a lot of other projects I've been involved before this one. 
mainly mainly Toontown related, you know, Disney's Toontown Online. There are fan servers, fan projects, stuff like that. I've been mainly involved. I never I've been mainly involved in those. And then for several years until I decided working on Toontown stuff got boring. So I decided to retire out of that thing and then started focusing strictly on other stuff like Backyard Sports Online. And and I can tell you now, there are a lot more fun than working on Toontown stuff, actually. What um makes it more fun? Well, that's hard to say. First of all, it's not Toontown, actually. Mm. That's it, really. I just, I don't know. It's a lot more fun doing other stuff than just Toontown stuff. Gotta have variety, you know? So so it's more just the, you like doing the variety of things versus just, you kind of got bored of doing the one thing all the time. Yes, yes, exactly. It was fun at first, but after a while, it got really boring, and I want to move on to other stuff, so I did. Moved on to other stuff. That's cool. So um, another thing that you mentioned is that that uh, Toontown had an online component to it. Yeah. So I'm curious, did working on that bringing those kind of servers back kind of assist you with bringing back the servers for the online for Backyard Baseball 2001? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It definitely did. Once the original Toontown was shut down back in 2013, other other servers started popping up, and almost none of them uses the original client. So in Python, I decided to learn how they work boost up my little own server and surprisingly that worked that was my first experience with widen servers and other stuff and i kind of carry that for backyard sports online although this isn't the original client this is a more custom scum vm client which it's probably better off because the original client uses old technology that probably None of the future versions of Windows even has anymore. So better off to start off first than just using old tech. Well, that's really cool. So, so you you took what you learned from these other projects and you applied it to this one, and then you yeah yeah exactly exactly that's really cool. Sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do is to try to take the similarities from different projects and try to, you know, apply it and build off of those. Yep, yep. So that's really cool. So what about the the Scum VM client makes it more uh, user-friendly with the newer technologies that we have now? More user-friendly than the old versions. Hmm. Well, first off, that most of the tech we're using now for Backyard Sports Online, it's all open sourced. The Scum VM is open sourced. The servers are open source. The library I use for communication with the servers is open sourced. It pretty much guarantees that when we eventually pass, the servers can still live on. That's my concept of using open source technology. That makes sense. So basically, like, it's not just one person that can edit it or whatever. It's, you know, a team of people that can work on it and make improvements of kind of like we have now. Yeah. One example of that is Question Monkey implementing generic support into online, which originally didn't. That's an amazing feat. The community can learn how to program and Add improvements to that, which surprises even me. Although I was involved with assistant stuff here and there, but Preston Monkey mostly did it himself, and I'm happy for him. 
Yeah, that was one of the the biggest improvements that you know because it allowed us to do so many different things with the different leagues and and tournaments that we possibly want to run in it both currently and in the future well, if you're having the same um limited characters you have a lot less variety and you gotta have a lot less teams that can be in each league especially with the turnout we had for this season we doubled what we had over the previous season and we would have had to have two leagues if based off of the the number of players that were in the game i'm glad more people are finding out and playing the surface because well it's amazing that's all i can say yeah all of this just was like when i first heard that you were working on this project like my entire mind was just like blown it's like how did you even like come up with the idea to do it or you know any of that how did you even you know most people don't even think this would be like a thing that's even possible you know they just think all oh, the servers are down they don't think oh let's try to see if they get reinstated or you know try to program a new one well, the idea of bringing back Backyard Sports Online isn't really a new idea for me. That idea dates back a really long time, since elementary school, actually. When I f first started playing backyard football, you know, in football, there's the menu with a menu option that says online play, and I knew they were down, but I often wish someone could bring the servers back and play the games online again. Little did I know that was going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So you were playing backyard football when you were younger and you saw the the icon there. And when you clicked on it, it said that, you know, you must connect to the internet or had some error code yeah. or whatever. I knew it would happen. I knew the servers were down, but I always wish that they could be playable. Like they can playable online again, and now it is, and I couldn't be any more happier. So when did you? When did like it cross your mind that you would be, or could be the person that was working on getting the servers reinstated? I'm sorry, what was the question again? So, you mentioned that, you know, you wish that they were, when you were playing backyard football yeah. back in the day, that you wish the servers were brought back in some capacity. When did it, or how did it cross your mind that, like, hey, I could be the person that could bring it back? Well, the idea pretty much came up when I was doing Toontown stuff. If I can bring, if I can make the original Toontown client back with my server, the very first thing that came to my mind is Backyard Sports. Because how fun it would be, really. So I decided to give it a little try using the original client and the original protocol. And actually, I made some progress, but not too much. You know, you see, I had little experience with reverse engineering, and that was kind of on hold for a while. But a little while later, I decided to try again, but this time using Scum VM and decompiling the de decompiling the scripts and making an educated guess on what makes things tick, and and here we are. So. How long did it take you to, from when you first had the idea to to start working on it and the servers being back brought online? Like how how much time did it take you from the idea being in your head to it actually being live for people to play on it? A very long time. I don't even know. I don't even remember how long, but. Um, when I started hacking Scum VM to make it work, that was pretty much the start of 2021, around January or February or March. I don't even remember anymore, but 
I just started hacking away. And when I made a, when I made significant progress, and I, I was like, man, this is actually getting somewhere. And when I eventually made it to a part where it's actually playable in both games, I was like, oh my god. I wish little me could see all of this because it would blew his mind away. That's amazing. Like you had a dream when you were younger and then you made it happen. That's really inspiring. Yeah, the dream never left my head since day one, whenever that is. But yeah, don't give up on your dreams. Keep working at it. Keep learning other things, and eventually you might reach the point where you are actually experienced enough to do this. It took a while learning the scum VM core base and what makes scum, the, the scum engine tick and the op codes, OP codes and stuff like that. And yeah. What would you say to, um, a young kid that wants to get into development or programming, do you have any advice for someone that would want to possibly get into that? I'm actually not much of a teacher, a tutor, or a mentor, but I guess the safe way to start off work with me is basic, basic stuff. You know, tackle a very small project like learning how variables work, learning how loops work, stuff like that. It may it it may be a struggle for a while, but eventually you might be a, you'll become a, a pro in no time. So start with start with the basics and start with something small and then eventually you'll you'll build up and be able to figure things out. Yeah, start small but and then eventually Build up, build up, and build up from that. That's what I would say. Now you mentioned you started with Python. Do you think that's a, a good one to start out with? Oh, definitely. Python is like the number one script and language in the world. So Python is a good skill to have. So there are there are others not there are other non programming language that you can learn just mainly for the loops and stuff but learning python at first is where it's at that's really cool one thing i want to do there is some we didn't already ask them i want to kind of look into the discord and had uh some of the members of the community had some questions for you, so I'm gonna see if we okay. if I didn't ask any of these already. Killer Bat said, uh, what led you to the desire to getting online play back online? Uh -huh. And did you play back in the day? I think you talked about that already. Yeah, I I talked about that already, but I did not play I did not play online back in the day. I wish I could have, but I was way too small, too little for to even access the access the internet. So unfortunately, no. I wish though, but no. You think that's a lot of people is that you know they wish they would have had it, but they were you know a couple years too young at that point, or didn't have an email address, or whatever the reason is. You know, their parents didn't want to want them, etc. Now we have that able to do it so you know that's really awesome jibbo wants to know what are your favorite video games of all time i thought about this long and long and a long time but i don't really have an answer i guess i don't have a favorite video game i kind of like them all no preference i if it interests me, I'll play it. I mean, it's not that hard. Well, do you have any, um, like, what are some of, like, the newer uh, video games that you're into? Some of the newer games that I'm into? 
uh, let's see, Splatoon 3, and uh, let's see, what else? I haven't kept up with the video game industry in a long time, and but I, no, I don't have really much. I know I already said that if a game interests me, I'll play it, but I don't think I have much of an interest in newer games, just mainly Nintendo ones like Splatoon 3, and that's pretty much it. So, so Nintendo games you like? Yeah, mainly that, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, Nintendo has a lot of good games, especially like the the Mario Karts and the Splatoons and those kind of games. Those are those are a lot of fun. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Lobo uh, asked what coding language SAS programs she specializes in. And, uh, I know you mentioned Python. Python, yes. Python first. I learned Python first. And then I learned JavaScript next, which is used for backyard board servers and the website, and then C and C++ for, for Scum VM. I think that's not a, I think that's not bad of a skill set. There's definitely more languages, languages I can learn, but those three, I'm pretty much good at for the moment. Is there any other languages that you that you know, or is it just mainly those three? And mainly those three, for the most part. I've been meaning to learn other languages, languages like Rust, and uh, I don't know. I was just mainly busy with other stuff than learning new languages. But uh, maybe someday I'll learn Rust, but who knows? Is that the one that? What's a phone was uh, talking about? Yes, yes, that's exactly the one he was talking about. Yeah, it sounded um uh, um like a more up to date kind of language versus some of the older ones. Yeah, was the same to be more up to date and more secure than C plus plus, but the same tech scares me personally, and that like kept putting me off from learning it. So maybe someday I'll overcome that fear, like Pajama Sam. <laughs> but <laughs> no, not right now. Question Monkey also asked, uh, what other uh, cool projects uh, are you working on now other than uh, the Backyard Sports? Oh. Other projects I'm working on now? Actually, not much of other projects, just a bit of random stuff here and there. But the main thing I'm focusing right now is actually scum VM stuff. I'm working on implementing implementing back the online support for a moon based commander back into scum VM. That and it was a lot of fun. Also, there's other games that have that had online capabilities from the same kind of time frame as well. Well, mainly just Moonbase Commando. It's another one of the humongous entertainment games, one of the lesser known ones, actually. And and that and unlike Backyard Sports, that feature may may or may not be implemented into the actual Scum VM build itself. But uh, who knows? Who knows? I'm talking with Seth, which is the Scum VM project. We talk about how to implement, how I implement Moonbase stuff into Scum VM and how that might work out in, into an eventual merge into the main repository. And yeah, it's fun. Really, lots of fun. No, uh, you, you mentioned kind of having the, the, the build as like the main, the, the online build as the main like scum build. Is that something that would be possible to do for backyard sports? Yeah. So if someone downloaded the scum down build from the website, it would be the one that that we have. Uh, yeah, Seth actually put up the idea of. Merging my online work for Backyard Sports down the line after I'm done with the Moonbase stuff. Yeah, and uh, 
after I'm done with Moonbase, I'll probably bring the topic back up to the others, to the other people in the backyard sports community, and uh, we'll see what goes from there. Hey, that'd be really cool, because then when someone clicks on it, they have the it, and then it will you know, work. They, they, yeah, they go right into the the password and you know logging on, and then yeah, yeah. They'll be kind of linked to us at, in some capacity. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. Good way to uh to grow the community as well. Killer Bat also wanted to know: Are you willing to lead the push for backyard baseball twenty twenty five if we crowdfunded the project? <laughs> uh, I don't really know. Uh. The community itself is pretty much good for pushing stuff forward. So I know we don't have, we don't own the rights for backyard sports, but if someone giving me, if we eventually have the rights and someone wants me to push towards backyard base, the future backyard baseball game, I mean, why not? I'm up for it. It'll be a lot of fun. It would be def- it would definitely be a fun project if we ever somehow got the rights. That's that's the challenging part. Yeah, yeah. That's the hard part. Because you can't really do too much unless you own the rights to everything. Kind of expensive, yes. You have to hit a few home ones in Wally for that. And the expensive part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the lottery or something, yeah. For sure. Alex7456 has a couple random kind of questions, or grab bag, so to speak. Said, uh, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? Uh, McDonald's. I guess that's all I have to say. What's your, uh, favorite thing to get at McDonald's? Thing to get at McDonald's? Uh, I don't get McDonald's very often, but every now and then, I get a full of powder and cheese. That's pretty much the only thing I eat at McDonald's. Those are good. Yeah. Those are pretty good. I either like that or the, the make, I really like the McChickens. Those are really good. Ah, uh, yeah. I thought they were good. Maybe I might give it a try someday. Because it has, like, a little bit of spice to it, but it's not, like, too spicy. It's just, like, just enough spice on it so that it has a lot, has flavor to it. Oh. And it's pretty cheap, so. If you want something mm, that's, that's really cheap, interesting, as well as good. That's a that's one of my favorites to get. Uh huh. Uh huh. Next time I'll get McDonald's, I'll think about that. <laughs> Sounds good. Another thing he wanted a question that he had was your favorite movie or movie franchise. Movie. Uh, I mainly love the Pixar movies. I mainly love Pixar movies and. One of my all-time favorite movies is Fighting Nemo. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. A lot of nostalgic Pixar movies. Yeah, those old Pixar movies are really good. They really hold up hold up to time. It's always really good after we watch them. You know that they're so good when they're trying to make sequels of them like 10, 15 years yeah. later. <laughs> It's like, well, you liked Finding Nemo. Let's have Finding Dory. <laughs> yeah, I remember going to the movies to watch Finding Dory. And honestly, it's not bad. Could have been better, but not bad for a sequel. Yeah, a lot of them are they're decent, but they're not a- anywhere close to the original ones. Yeah, yeah, the originals is where it's at. And now they're making a sequel for Making a sequel for Inside Out. Hmm, I wonder how that's going to work out. <laughs> so, so what is it? Uh, is it called Outside In? Inside Out. Is that the original one? The original movie is called Inside Out? Inside Out, yes. So then the sequel should be Outside In. <laughs> <laughs> Outside In. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. They should have thought of that, yeah. They should hire you. That's a good one. <laughs> well, you maybe can give them my uh, contact information. <laughs> <laughs> Do you 
have another third question that Alex had was, do you have a favorite baseball player? And I'm assuming he means major league player. Yeah, yeah, major leagues. Even though I play a lot of backyard baseball, I don't actually watch, really watch actual baseball. So I don't really have a favorite player. So yeah, I'm a little, little too focused on program to actually watch baseball. So yeah. Do you have a favorite pro that's in backyard baseball out of the pro players? David Kidd? Uh, I kind of misunderstood your question. What is it again? So, uh, you know how they have the, the MLB pros as kids? Yeah, yeah. Which one of those uh, players is your favorite? Oh, which one of the pros is my favorite? Um, I mainly play backyard kids more than pros, so, but for my favorite pro, I think it would be Randy Johnson. He's a really good pitcher. So yeah, Randy Johnson is always a a, a fun one. He has a lot of f- funny lines, and his uh yeah. animations are pretty cool. That moment, that moment where we crazy bonded the home run in that charity stream never left my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I I do remember that. That that was a uh, that was a uh, one of the highlights of the of the gameplay. Yeah, the games can be really crazy, but sometimes, but. And a lot of times, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The you know they might have a uh, random glitches and stuff, but if they do give us a good laugh. Yeah, especially if online is involved with other other than glasses and freezes and lockups stuff like that. Other glitches though, really funny. You know, some of those glitches are actually in the normal gameplay because i've had kind of where i get the the random like glitch crazy bunt and turns into a home run (laughs) even on an offline game i think i actually think that actually happened in my last rbbl game (laughs) so (laughs) yeah luckily it didn't it wasn't the reason that like made it a win or a loss because that would be kind of you know like uh, you won or lost because of a bug, but it still is kind of funny when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> What's a phone wants to know, what is the capital of Wyoming? Cyan, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Dip, one of the newer members of the Discord, Wants to know where your favorite uh, backyard kid is. Oh, everybody should know this. Papo Sanchez. Yes, let's go. <laughs> Adios, baseball. <laughs> I think the last question that we have that was from the Discord was, and you said that this might not apply too much to you because you don't play with the pros too much is ultimate backyard pro team based off of the MLB pros. I'm sorry, what was that? Basically your your top nine, if you had to make a team of of the pro players, which what would your team be? Oh I can't really think of teams this quick, so I'm gonna pass this one. Sorry. Yeah, I know you mentioned that you don't you play more of the backyard kids. Yeah. And I know you made the um the team for the charity stream, so Yeah. If you wanna know I don't actually remember what exactly your team was that you had. I'm gonna look it up to see if I can find it really quick. Yeah, yeah. You can go do that. I don't mind. Yeah, let's see if I can find that real quick. Okay, here we go. So instead of, I mean, this is not directly answering the question, but since you play with more of the backyard kids, this is the team that you came up with, which was Pete Wheeler, Keisha Phillips, 
the goat, Pablo Sanchez. <laughs> the goat, yes. Sally Dobbs, Lisa Crockett, Annie Frazier, Stephanie Morgan, Sydney or Ashley Weber, and Kenny Kawaguchi. My team decisions varies every now and then, but those were the main people I would choose. I would maybe, I'm sorry, you go. It's, I, I would just, the one thing that kind of stood out to me is that you put Sydney or Ashley instead of both because they get that boost when they play together. Yeah, if if the game decides me to pick both levels, I go for it. But sometimes I can get you know much better defense than using one Weber. Yeah, the Webers are fun to play with. The kids, that was more fun. The yeah, Sydney and Ashley are fun to play with in my experience. Any of those kids on my team is fun to play with, actually. Especially Pete Wheeler and Papo Sanchez. These are probably my most favorites of the backyard kids. Papo Sanchez and Pete Wheeler just behind him. Hey, that's awesome. So, I mean, I'm glad I was able to find that. So that was all the questions that we had for... That was in the Discord channel. Um. Okay. Do you have any kind of ideas? Cause I know that you mentioned that backyard football was kind of the reason that this whole, you kind of went on this entire journey of making this. Do you have any kind of ideas or things about backyard football that you wish that we would implement? Uh, about football? And... Um... Honestly, I couldn't think of anything. Because I know we've been focusing a lot on baseball, but, you know, football is really fun, too. Yeah, football is a lot of fun. And I think that's one thing that I, you know, hopefully at some point that we can, you know, put some more effort into kind of growing the football side of things. Yeah, I'd love to see more football. It'll be fun. Yeah, I think that baseball's in a, a pretty good spot right now. So, you know, maybe it's a good time to kind of, you know, pivot some of our resources and, you know, energy towards trying to, you know, make a a solid, like, football season and league. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun watching football alongside baseball. I love both games, really. I like to see football getting more love. I noticed that some people have mentioned that in the Discord, and we've been so focused on just trying to get baseball and baseball of the the different leagues and the uh, different events that we've been having. But you know, there's been that at least of you know several people that have mentioned that about football. And speaking of football, I believe that there is going to be another event coming up soon for that. Oh, nice. Yep, that is coming up on the 30th Halloween hike at 4 p.m. Eastern. Oh, Halloween. An Halloween themed. Nice. So that is this coming Sunday. I have to look forward to that. Yeah, I'd have to look forward to that. That sounded pretty interesting. Yeah, I think... uh you can make an announcement about that so people can plan and look forward to that. That should be really exciting. In the middle of the baseball season right now, almost halfway uh-huh. through, a lot of exciting games. Uh, right before we were recording this, I was watching uh, Wooligan and Trigatris play their game. Fabian hit a home run that, uh, I think it was a three-run home run that really pushed the lead open and won Wooligan that game. That's nice. Always love a good league game. Yeah, that is uh, for sure. There's been a lot of really good league games. And that's one thing that I, I do want to make more content on. I've been trying to, you know, have the time to record all these. And, you know, I want to try to bring a mis- mixture of content between the RBBL the baseball league, the football league, 
any tournaments we might have or any side seasons we might have or various kind of interview kind of podcasts like this one. So if you are interested in talking about anything related to backyard sports whatsoever, let me know and we'll we'll schedule something. So think of that. Uh, That's going to do it for this episode. Thanks again to for you little cat for coming on and extremely thankful for all the work that you have put into allowing us to have this platform to enjoy the backyard sports games in this capacity once again we would not be in this position if it wasn't for all the blood sweat and tears that you've put into this and we are extremely thankful for you for that <laughs> Oh, no problem. I like I liked having here. Thanks for having me. With that, I'll see you guys in the next episode. See you next time.